UQQ and VUG are the two biggest growth ETFs for asset and management. So today we're going to strip these two ETFs down to the bone to find out everything we need to know about them. I mean, everything. My name is Rick. Welcome to my investing channel. If you're new, say hi to everyone in the comment section below. And now let's go straight to the two ETFs. We're talking about two big giants here. One is QQQ, the Investco QQQ Trust Series 1 ETF, which is the fifth ETF in the world for asset under management. And the other is VUG the Vanguard Growth ETF, which is number seven in the world. By the way, the next video is gonna be on where the stock market is headed this year, and above all, the technology sector, which has seen huge gains in the past 12 months, and expecting the sector to have the same returns in the future would be foolish. So don't forget next week's video because it's gonna be important for growth investors. With today's video instead, we're comparing these two ETFs regardless of what the future outlook for growth is gonna be. So, for this comparison, I'm gonna grade six different aspects of the ETFs, and at the end of the video, I will also tell you exactly what would be my approach in choosing between QQQ and VUG. So now let's go right to the first aspect, which is the strategy. The Invesco QQQ tracks hundreds of the largest and most innovative non-financial companies listing on the Nasdaq stock market based on market capitalization. The same companies included in the so-called Nasdaq 100 index, rated as the best performing large cap growth fund on the market based on the returns of the last 15 years, QQQ doesn't really need any explanation. Information technology is the strongest sector in this ETF, financials and REITs are not included, and companies included must have a minimum average daily trading volume of 200,000 shares and have traded for at least three full calendar months. So this is how they choose which companies land on QQQ. First of all, all the companies on Nasdaq are ranked for market capitalization, excluding financials and real estate investment trusts. Then the top 75 get selected. Any other company that was already a member of the index the year before and are still ranked within the first 100 are also selected. In the event that less than 100 holdings pass the first two criteria, the following companies in order of market cap are selected. On the other hand, VUG is also a market cap weighted ETF and tracks the CRSP US Large Cap Growth Index, which selects the major growth stocks listed in the US stock market. It includes large cap stocks classified as growth and listed in any US exchanges. To identify the companies with strong growth characteristics, it's really simple. The index selects the companies with the highest price to book ratios and higher forecasted growth. As you can see, both ETFs, QQQ and VUG, focus on growth and are market cap weighted. Since the screening criteria are not incredibly sophisticated in both, but at least in VUG there is attention to price to book ratio and forecasted growth, I'm gonna give here 7 points to QQQ and 8 points to VUG. The second aspect is the expense ratio, which is an extreme effect on your long-term profit. In fact, my channel has an expense ratio of 0%. That's why by subscribing to it, you're essentially going to have a return on investment which tends to infinity. Jokes aside, next to the free videos, you get free access to a lot of free tools for your investments like compound interest calculators, expense trackers, savings versus investment calculators, rebalance tools, and so on. So join the community by clicking subscribe. Now back to the ETFs, QQQ has an expense ratio of 0.2%, while VOG has an incredibly cheap 0.04%. I know the difference doesn't seem much, but if we test the long-term effect on nerdwallet.com, and let's say you invest $5,000 per year for 30 years, at a rate of return of 6% and you pay 0.2% expense ratio, you're gonna have paid roughly $15,220 of fees, which in turn is 3.6% of your final portfolio amount. So yes, 0.2% yearly, but it does have a 3.6% weight on your final wealth, which I think is the real ratio that should matter most. If instead you have 0.04% expense ratio like VUG, the total cost of fees is roughly $3,100 which means 0.73% of your total wealth goes away as fee. I have to say that if you want QQQ, there is also a cheaper version called QQQM, which is identical and less known only because it's newer. And with that, you get a fee discount from 0.2 to 0.15%, which is totally fine. Since we're comparing QQQ to VUG today, and when it comes to expense ratio, VUG is actually much cheaper, I'm gonna give seven points to QQQ and 10 points to VUG, making VUG the leader with 18 points and QQQ following with 14. The next aspect we're gonna see is is the risk of these ETFs. There are four kinds of risks you can have. The first is the stock market risk, the chance that the whole stock market crashes. The second is the sector risk, 
which is the chance that something happens to a single sector. QQQ and VOG are extremely similar in their composition, both with information technology at around 56 to 58% of the fund, consumer discretionary at around 19 to 20%, and so on. The third risk is the non-diversification risk, which we're gonna talk about in the next point of this video. The fourth and last risk is the investment side risk that depends on which segments of the stock market are included in the ETF. But since both ETFs are market cap weighted and focus on growth, there is no big difference here. Even if we check the sharp ratio of the two ETFs, which is a measure of risk adjusted returns, even on different time frames, we notice that they have a similar sharp ratio. So for this reason, I'm gonna give here six points to both ETFs, bringing QQQ to 20 points and VUG to 24. Point number four is diversification. VUG contains 208 different companies, while QQQ only 101. Obviously, this gives a little bit more diversification to VUG, which I wanna clarify doesn't necessarily mean that VUG is gonna perform better in bad market conditions. VUG also has around 10% of mid cap stocks, which is not a bad thing since medium cap has outperformed large cap in the last 30 years with an average annual return of 11.7% against 9.67% of large cap. Diversification is, in my opinion, always a double-edged sword. For example, in this case, I believe QQQ to be a better performer in the long term because it's less diversified. But since we are grading diversification here, I'm gonna have to give five points to QQQ and six points to VUG, bringing QQQ to 25 and VUG to 30 points. Aspect number five are the holdings. I'm gonna focus here on the top 10 holdings for both ETFs, since they both cover the same sectors. As you can see on this table, the holdings included in the top 10 are quite similar, with the exception of Broadcom and Costco for QQQ, and Eli Lilly and Visa for VUG. But when it comes to the total weight of the top 10, you can see that VUG is heavier with 56% against 46.6 of QQQ. So this is, in my opinion, an important point in favor of QQQ. You can see the same looking at single holdings, like QQQ has 8.74% on Microsoft, while VUG almost 13%. QQQ has 7.47% on Apple, while VUG over 11%. So I really like the fact that QQQ despite focusing on the 100 best companies on the Nasdaq, manages to diversify better within the holdings. So for this reason, I'm gonna give nine points to QQQ and six points to VUG, bringing QQQ to a total of 34 points and VUG to 36. All right, let's jump to the last and probably most important aspect, which is the performance. I wanna remind you here because you'll see that both ETFs have had a wonderful performance in the past 10, 15 years, that past performance is not a guarantee of future results. And regarding this, as I told you at the beginning of the video, next week I'm gonna publish a video where I try to analyze the economic situation of the United States and how we can expect the growth market and the total stock market to perform in the next 12 months. So if you haven't, subscribe to the channel because you're gonna be notified of the video next week. But now let's take a look at the past performance of these two ETFs because it's been incredible. In the last 10 years, QQQ would have turned an investment of $100,000 into $520,654, which in the world of ETFs is a result you won't see anywhere else, except maybe in a pure information technology ETF like VGT. The QQQ fan page makes a good job showing off how QQQ performed better than the S&P 500, with QQQ growing 809% since 1999, versus 489% of the S&P 500. Five-star Morningstar rating, the second most traded ETF in the US based on average daily volume as of December 2023, QQQ not only has a great history of performance, but he has it since 25 years, being one of the oldest ETFs ever created. If we compare the performance of the two ETFs using PortfoliosLab.com, you can see that year-to-date, VUG has performed much better than QQQ with 10.87% against 8.57%. And I attribute this to the fact that this year, the Magnificent Seven companies have been the only focus of every investor, and VG has a higher weight on this company. But moving to longer periods, like five years, or even more with 10 years, you see how QQQ dominated the race as a clear winner. So for the fact that QQQ had such a great past performance and that it was able to have this performance for such a long period of time, I'm gonna give 10 points to QQQ and seven to VUG, making QQQ the winner with 44 total points against 43 of VUG. All right, QQQ might be the winner, but still, what do we know or what do we expect from the growth sector in the next 
one to five years. The first thing we should all remember is that even 10 years historical results can be misleading and may not represent a good metric for the next 10 years. QQQ has grown 40% in the last 12 months, which is much more than its 18% average annual growth of the last 10 years and much more than its 6.68% annual growth since inception. The whole growth sector has been booming since 2010, but has had the worst results in the decade before. If you look at the latest developments of the economic situation of the United States, the inflation levels and the productivity of the country, you might see a bright future for the growth sector, but still there are many variables to consider. That's why next week I'm gonna publish a video exactly on this, where I try to analyze the current economic situation of the US and how it might influence the growth of the stock market in the next 12 months. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so that you'll be notified of the next video. All right, guys, let us know in the comment section below what you think about QQQ and VUG. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like to support the channel. Thank you all for watching, guys. I wish you a great day. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.